SLM News presents your voice for a free and independent southern homeland. Hello and welcome. I'm the Palmetto Patriot and today I want to talk about the rebirth of our nation. And no, I do not refer to that government in Washington DC, that, that government of the United States of America. Please remember folks that we are much older than is that failed political union we currently live under. Today, I talk not about the rebirth of that regime. May it slide into the Potomac River and be covered in mud forever. But rather, about the rebirth of our people. The Southern nation has its early origins primarily in the colonies of Virginia and Carolina in the 1600s. Notice that we're here talking about our people living, having governments, having advanced civilization here in our land, in a unique culture in all the world even then, and notice when we're talking about. This is long before the United States federal government was created. As we say here repeatedly at SOMN, before they existed, we were Southerners. Southern culture existed even back then. Even then our language was evolving towards a Southern branch of the English language that we Southerners today speak as our native tongue. And what became the homeland of the Southern people our culture quickly evolved. Today it is of course steeped in myth and folklore. Just mentioning the names of some of our cities like Savannah, Memphis, New Orleans, Atlanta, Charleston, these are world famous cities created by our people and they've given so much to the world in the form of music, cuisine, literature, and so many other things as well. Indeed, Southern culture dominated the American civilization up and until Lincoln's invasion of our homeland in 1861. And even after our defeat and total subjugation, Southerners still somehow went on to dominate American culture in much of the 20th century. Yet all the time, our homeland was up more than 20 times as poor as the Northeast, the conquering region of their federal invasion. And all the time, despite that fact that our people wanted to be independent and had voted to be so, we were forcibly held in their union and lorded over by their federal government. We are of course not as ancient a nation as some peoples, that's true, but nations have been born, grew, and perished during the lifespan of our southern nation. I refer to our people, a single culture, not to our individual sovereign states. Our people, they have long existed, long been unique, and long desired self-determination and independence in Dixie. We have as a people fought the French, the Spanish, the Yankees, and the Mexicans to be free. And today, our struggle continues. And today we're also seeing a rebirth. Awareness of our nationality is on the rise. Pride in our nationality is on the rise. Defiance and outright rejection of federal rule over us is on the rise in our homeland. The fact that we are a people is undeniable. The fact that we are a people who desire liberty and survival in our own homeland is also undeniable. And the greatest obstacle between us and our goal of liberty and survival is undeniably our occupation. Until we are able to determine our own immigration policies, our own policies regarding what they call abortion, and control our own educational systems and other such things as all free people do around the world, until then we continue our struggle. And not only that, we are intensifying our struggle. We are becoming more militant. And we are tired of being occupied. We're sick and tired of it. We're tired of being invaded. Tired of being pushed around. The southern nation is rising and we will secure our liberty and our survival in our homeland. We will secure this. This is our promise to our ancestors, to the generations of southerns who came before us and made us who we are. And it is also our solemn promise to the unborn generations of southerns who, God willing, will follow us here in Dixie, here in our country. <laughs>